Well, uh, well, uh, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to lesson two in our Wella Francais, the French series here on the Wella Tom channel. Today, we are going to be looking over the passé composé, which is your go to past tense in French. If you haven't seen our first episode yet on the present tense, be sure to check it out. I will be sure to link it up above and also down below in the description. Let's take a look at our class notes for today. And if you would like to get yourself a copy of these, I have them available on my store and I will have a link for you uh, down below in the description if you'd like to get your hands on a copy. So what is the passé composé? The passé composé is used to talk about two types of actions in the past, either one that took place at an unspecified point in time or a specified point in time. So let's explain that a little bit. If I said to you in English, I have seen that film before. This is something that took place in the past, but we don't specifically mention when. So the keyword here is before. Before is quite vague, and this uh, corresponds to the English present perfect tense. Whereas if I said to you, I saw that film yesterday, this is something that took place in the past and I specify when exactly, hence the keyword yesterday. That is a time marker letting us know exactly when something took place in the past. This corresponds to the English simple past. Sometimes taking a look at English grammar, if that is your native language or simply a language you know well, can help us as we learn a foreign language. All right, so we're going to look at auxiliary verbs and the past participle form of verbs in this second section because the passé composé is a compound verb tense. So the passé composé uses two auxiliary, otherwise known as helping verbs, avoir, which means to have, and être, to be. And just a note on my French pronunciation, like I mentioned in my last video, I am simply a fellow student of French sharing my notes. I'm not a French teacher. I'm not an expert in French, but I'm just hoping to share my notes with you guys so that it can help you out as you study and so you can see how someone else has learned this language. So these verbs will get conjugated in the present tense, and the main verb, the verb that follows the helping verb, will be conjugated in its participe passé, the past participle form. If you don't know what a past participle form is, think of in English to see, that's the infinitive form of the verb, and seen, seen is the past participle. So let's first review how to conjugate avoir and être in the present tense. We have, for example, avoir, to have. J'ai, tu as, ils, elles, ont, a. Nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Then we have être, to be. Je suis, tu es, il, elle, ont, est. Nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. And now we're going to see the past participle, the participe passé form of regular verbs. So, ER verbs will no longer end in ER, but rather with the accent aigu, the accent aigu, which is the acute accent in English. It's the accent that goes in that direction. So for example, parler will become parler, same pronunciation, just written differently. That's like saying to speak and then spoken. Now, IR verbs will change to end in I. So for example, dormir will change to end in dormi. So that's like saying to sleep becomes slept. And finally, RE verbs will change to end in U, or the letter U. For example, rendre will become rendu. So that's like saying to render will become rendered. Now, most verbs in French do take avoir as their helping verb, while others do take être. This largely comes down to transitive versus intransitive verbs. However, there's also a memory aid that we're going to take a look at that will help you to remember which verbs take être. So what is a transitive verb? Transitive verbs are verbs in which the action passes directly from the subject, otherwise known as the actor, the person doing the action, to the object. So for example, if I said to you, j'ai mangé une pomme ce matin, that means I ate an apple this morning. So the action of me eating something is directly passing to the object, the apple. Whereas an intransitive verb is a verb in which the action does not pass directly from the subject to the object. 
For example, if I said to you, je suis devenu médecin, that means I became a doctor. It's also something that I perhaps can't show you I did. It's more of an abstract idea. That's a way that I like to look at this as well. So this is the common popular acronym that is often used to help students of French remember some of the most common verbs that take être as their helping verb. Now note there are some uh, variations to this acronym. The one that I'm most familiar with and was taught myself is Dr. and Mrs. Vandertramp. So it stands for the following. Devenir, to become. Revenir, to come back. Mourir, to die. Rentrer, to go back in or to re-enter. Sortir, to go out or to exit. Venir, to come. Arriver, to arrive. Naître, to be born. Descendre, to go down or descend. Entrer, to enter. Rester, to stay or remain. Tomber, to fall. Retourner, to return. Aller, to go. Monter, to go up or mount. And partir, to leave or depart. So that's just something to help you remember these verbs. Because I studied Italian before studying French, much of these verbs, uh, they're pretty much the same. So the Italian counterparts also use the Italian counterpart of être. So I didn't have to rely on this memory aid too much, but I did use it a little bit. It can definitely help, and maybe you guys will find it helpful as well. So now let's take a look in this third part, how we conjugate regular verbs in the passé composé. So we're going to now bring all these rules that we just explained together. We're going to see a verb like manger changed or conjugated, if you will, into its participe passé, past participle form. So instead of ending in er, it's going to end in the e with the accent aigu, the acute accent. And um, choisir will be choisi. It's going to end in the letter i. Attendre is going to end in the letter u or u in French. All right, cool. So manger means to eat. And we're also using the only helping verb in all of these is avoir. So we have j'ai mangé, tu as mangé, il, elle, on a mangé, nous avons mangé, vous avez mangé, ils ont mangé, elles ont mangé. So you see how it works? There's a lot of repetition. All we do is pronoun, corresponding conjugation of avoir in the present tense, and the participe passé form of the main verb. That's it. So choisir, to choose. J'ai choisi, tu as choisi, il est l'on a choisi, nous avons choisi, vous avez choisi, ils ont choisi, elles ont choisi. Attendre, to wait, j'ai attendu, tu as attendu, il est l'on a attendu, nous avons attendu, vous avez attendu, ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. So as you can see, like I mentioned, all we did, conjugate avoir in the present, and then we place the participe passé form of the main verb after it. That's it. And any of these can mean either. So, j'ai choisi. I chose. I have chosen. Just depends on context. So here are some examples. J'ai mangé la pizza. That means I ate the pizza or I have eaten the pizza. Because I'm not telling you when, there's no marker of time, it's ambiguous. But this is just to show you a simple example. J'ai mangé la pizza. Then we have a longer example here. Tu as choisi d'étudier les mathématiques l'année dernière. That means you chose to study mathematics last year. Tu as choisi d'étudier les mathématiques l'année dernière. Now we have an example with attendre in the past. Ils ont attendu longtemps pour aller en France. They waited a long time to go to France. Ils ont entendu longtemps pour aller en France. Now let's talk a little bit about the verbs that take être. We're going to conjugate them, talk a little bit about them, and see them in context. So when using être, as we also mentioned in our present tense video, we need to be mindful of gender and number agreement. We're not going to get terribly deep into it today, but we will definitely skim the surface. When the subject is female, add the letter E after the participe passé verb ending. When the subject is more than one person, add an S. If it's female and more than one person, you add an 
ES, so they just come together. We're going to demonstrate how this is done by conjugating aller, considering the subject is male. Venir is going to be conjugated only in the female. And descendre will be conjugated as both, with using the female option in parentheses. The reason for doing that is to show you three different ways of writing this, with the last one being the most common you will find on websites and in books. I find the parentheses can sometimes be a little confusing, so I want to show you everything separated as well. So aller means to go, conjugated in the passé composé. It uses être as its helping verb, but we're considering that the uh, subject is always male. So, je suis allé, tu es allé, il est allé, or on est allé, nous sommes allés, vous êtes allés, ils sont allés, or ils sont allés. You could do the liaison there. Now, if you notice, the singular ones just have the standard accent aigu on the letter E. That's it. However, we add an S to show it's plural when we're talking about more than one subject. So for nous, vous, and il. Now, partir, which means to depart or also to leave, we're going to use this only considering a subject is female. So, je suis parti, tu es parti, il est parti, oh sorry, elle est parti, nous sommes partis, vous êtes parti, elles sont parties. Now, as we can see here, if we were just conjugating this based on the rules that we had before, an IR verb changes to end in I. However, when the subject is female, add an additional E after the participe passé form of the verb. So, parti. The reason why I said add an additional E, which perhaps I should put in parentheses as well, is because let's say je suis allé. Let's say the person I in this situation is female. We add an additional E. Okay, so the standard participe passé form, and then we add an E. Similarly, if we're talking about a group of girls and only people in this group, we are female, it would be nous sommes allés. Just like that, same pronunciation, still have an S to show that we're talking about a group of people, but we're also adding in the letter E. So now let's look at descendre, to descend. Je suis descendu. Yet again, it would be the same if someone was female. We just add the E. Je suis descendu. Tu es descendu. Il est en est descendu. Nous sommes descendus. Vous êtes descendu. Ils, elles sont descendus. And that's it. That is how you would say, I have descended, I descend. I descended. It's actually the same. I have descended. I ha I descend. Yeah, I have descended. I descend. Maybe descent. You know what? We're thinking about French right now. Let's not worry too much about English. So here are these very same verbs now used in some context. So, François, tu es déjà allé à Paris, n'est-ce pas? François, tu es déjà allé à Paris, n'est-ce pas? So this is François or Francis. You've gone to Paris before, right? So what we have here is déjà. Now, déjà means already, but it can also, uh, like, think of déjà vu, which they also say in French, déjà vu. Uh, déjà vu means you've seen something before, right? So it can also be used to mean before in these particular contexts. Perhaps in a future lesson we may talk about this a little bit more, or if you happen to come across it in your studies. Anyway, we have tu es... Aller. Just the ending with the E with the accent aigu because it's a male that we're talking about. One male, François. Tu es déjà allé à Paris, n'est-ce pas? So, n'est-ce pas, pronounced quickly, n'est-ce pas, just is like saying, is, is that not so? It's like saying that. Is that not so? In English, we would say, right? Here's another example. Mélanie et Juliette sont partis hier soir. That means Melanie and Juliette left or departed last night. So we're talking about two females. So it's going to be the L form, the plural for they, only in female. We're going to add an E after our participe passé form of the verb, parti, and then we're adding an S because there's more than one person. And hier soir means last night. This looks just like the Italian ieri sera, if any of you guys have seen my Italian content as well.
Now, here's an example with descendre. So, je suis descendu de la montagne pour voir la rivière. Je suis descendu de la montagne pour voir la rivière. That means I came down or I descended from the mountain to see the river. Yet again, one person here, he's male. Uh, we're considering he's male and we know that because it's just descendu. If this person speaking was female, she would say, je suis descendu, but with an E at the end. So you can't hear any difference when you speak, but when you write, there is a difference. All right, now we're going to take a look here at conjugating avoir and être in the passé composé. So we've seen them conjugated in the present, but what happens if you want to say I have had or I've been or I was, right? Here's how you can say them. So avoir, both avoir and être take avoir as their helping verb. So j'ai eu, tu as eu, il, elle, on a eu. Nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Then, être, to be. J'ai été, tu as été, ils, elles, ont, a, été. Nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. The fun thing about the... Participe passive form of être is that été is also the same word for summer. Uh, I don't know why, but I, I find that quite amusing. Here are some examples in context. Vous avez eu deux chiens dans le passé. Vous avez eu deux chiens dans le passé. You guys had two dogs in the past. So here's a pretty useful word, pretty simple. We have passé in the title, passé composé, and that's also how you say the past. Le passé. So, vous avez eu. You guys had, you all had, two dogs in the past. Now, this could also be you formal, depending on context. So, vous avez eu deux chiens dans le passé. You, formally, I don't know you, so I'm going to call you vous, had two dogs in the past. Just depends on context. J'ai été surpris. I, can, I always have a hard time with S-U-R. Sur, surpris. I think that's how you say it. J'ai été surpris par leur réponse. That means I was surprised by their response. J'ai été surpris par leur réponse. I was surprised by their response. All right. We're going to finish up this video today uh, with irregular verbs. So with irregular verbs, it really just comes down to memorization. As you know, être is a highly irregular verb. The stem and the verb endings don't always correspond with what we see in other verbs in the present tense. And just as well, when we're dealing with irregular verbs in the passé composé, it's the same thing. For example, let's take a look at the verb faire. Faire means to do or to make. Now, if this was a normal, a regular RE verb, we would just eliminate the RE and put the letter U in its place, U. But we don't say fait U. We don't say that in the participe passé form, in the passé composé. We say fait, fait with a silent T. So we say, j'ai fait, tu as fait, il, elle, on a fait, nous avons fait, vous avez fait, Ils ont fait, elles ont fait. Now, venir, which means to come, venir uses être as its helping verb. It comes from the V in Vandertramp, if we remember that acronym, Dr. and Mrs. Vandertramp, or Vandertramp, however you like to say it. Je suis venu, tu es venu, il, elle, on est venu, nous sommes venus, vous êtes venus, ils sont venus, elles sont venus. Yet again, if we have a female in any of these situations, we would put an E, or it, the person is female. Now, just to uh, point out, I don't, I didn't want to put in too many slashes, okay? But technically, it's just il est venu, elle est venu with the E. You have to include it, okay? Don't get too crazy in the in the way that it's written, uh, but I just wanted to point that out in case you have a very keen eye when you were reviewing these notes later on. Now, here are two examples in context. For example, j'ai fait une vidéo pour mes camarades de classe. 
That means I made a video for my classmates. I love how they say my comrades in French. J'ai fait une vidéo pour mes camarades de classe. Video in French is feminine. In Italian, it's masculine. It's a little difference there. And then if we say, je suis venu te voir. I came to see you. Je suis venu te voir. So here we see um, that the subject is female because there's an E at the end of this. Je suis venu te voir. And that is it, guys, for today's lesson. So this wasn't that bad, right? It's actually a couple minutes shorter than our present tense lesson because what you're always going to find with a language, I always like to think of it as a bell curve. Basically, in the very beginning of your studies, the amount of grammar and technical knowledge that you gain is a lot. You learn a lot of grammar, you get a lot of technical knowledge because it's a very steep incline. Then finally, once you gain enough knowledge of the basics on how a language works, you then start to come down from that um, bell curve from the, um, from the highest point. So that is something pretty cool, right? So we haven't gone terribly into detail with everything, uh, but we did cover a lot of the basics. Feel free to let me know uh, down below in the comment section if you guys have any questions, and I will see if I'm able to uh, help you guys out, or perhaps other people watching that are uh, native uh, French speakers may be able to help as well. Thank you guys, like always, for tuning in and checking out this video. Thank you very much for all of your support, both now and over all these years of me being here on YouTube. If you would like to help support my channel even more, feel free to uh, purchase and download your copy of the class notes for this lesson. Yet again, a link will be down below in the description. And also feel free to join Whalo University by registering for any of the classes or all of them if you'd like some more in-depth lessons on Italian. They're actually even in much more in-depth than what we're doing here with French. This is like half of what we do in Whalo University because in Whalo University, when you get the class notes that are included in your class tuition, you, we do a in-class exercise, there is a homework exercise, and then a corresponding answer key. All but one of the lessons has homework, and that would be the very beginning because that was just a pronunciation one. But anyway, guys, thanks so much yet again. Always remember to spread the love, and I hope to see you guys again soon in some future or even past Wella Francais videos.